A Labour MP has stood up at the end of Prime Minister's questions. There's two questions which are worth uh, looking at at the end of Prime Minister's questions. One is about um, uh, Kevin Jones asks the Prime Minister whether he still has confidence in Nick Reid, the uh, post office boss, after it's emerged that he is also under investigation. Uh, Henry Staunton revealed this yesterday. And uh, the, uh, the Prime Minister dithered about the response. He said it would be inappropriate to comment um, while the investigation is taking place. Well, that's convenient. <laughs> Maybe he will no longer be in power by the time that investigation ultimately gets to its conclusion. And that really is the problem. And that's the problem which um, Diana Johnson, Dame Diana Johnson, has brought up. And she brings up the question of infected blood. And it's all part of that same thing of the government and the law courts dragging their feet in paying up compensation, admitting responsibility when they've got it wrong. When the government or the tax office wants money, it's only too quick to demand that you pay. But when the government is on the back foot, my goodness, years go by, decades go by before the government will finally, reluctantly um, cough up. And the courts are, as we saw in um, Mr Bates versus the post office, rather brilliantly, when the fellow tried to represent himself in court, um, of course, the illusion was that the court was trying to help him, but in fact, the court was setting him up to take a fall. Because the documents, the language of the court, is not the language of ordinary plain English. It's the language of English that has been coded. So a word has additional or different meanings to the meaning that it has in ordinary life. And if you're not part of that little group, that little um, Masonic handshake, then you have no idea what that word is intended to mean. And papers are hidden and papers are moved so that, again, you can't know. You can't know. I have spoken to so many whistleblowers, particularly from the NHS. Uh, my, my mind is buzzing with the information I've been fed and the stories, the horror stories that I've been privy to. And I'm, I'm very grateful to people for telling me these stories. Um, but it makes me furious. And then there's the factor eight blood crisis. Going back to the 1970s and 1980s, uh, 2,900 people are believed to have been infected since the 1970s. And that's uh, uh, apparently somebody's done a calculation that at, at its height it was one person being infected every four days. This is people uh, contaminated with HIV, with hepatitis C, imported from the United States, um, being given transfusions, uh, complications in childbirth and, and, it, and it is extraordinary and um, one person dying every four days um, and uh, while, while, while haemophiliacs are are, that, are are the biggest group in that in that community um, the community is much larger than just simply haemophiliacs. Uh, and I'm on the haemophilia scale. Um, and I, I, I'm i ever grateful that um, I was not infected. I don't know how that was possible. Um, and it took a while before I even realised I was getting blood products. Um, and um, But I, I, I was incredibly lucky. And yet, uh, Longstaff produced his report and um, and demanded uh, and recommended interim compensation payments should be made to victims and bereaved partners and yet nothing has happened that's from April 2023 and um, uh, Diana Johnson has drawn attention to this this morning uh, to Rishi Sunak and I think we should listen to what she's got to say um, I I this is uh, this is a story along with the post office, Windrush, um, and um, I'm sure there's another one, but uh, the the repetitive foot dragging of 
the government is deplorable. It must be condemned and it must change. If the government gets something wrong, it doesn't matter the colour of the government. If the government gets something wrong, it must sort it out. It must compensate. It must exonerate. It must repay the money that it's taken or that somebody else has stolen in its name. And this fantasy of investigations, committees, it's a fantasy. It's a fantasy. And... Uh, and, and, and also people um, who've been released from prison, who haven't done anything, who've been promised money and it still hasn't been delivered. Why is that? Why is that? Why, are, why is our government so useless in holding its hand up and making good the damage that it has caused? <laughs> Another 80 victims of the contaminated blood scandal have died since Sir Brian Langstaff gave his final recommendations on compensation to the government in April 2023, 329 days ago. Will the Prime Minister join families who are lobbying members of Parliament here today to explain why his government has failed to implement any of those yeah. recommendations yeah. Yeah. 11 months on. Yeah. Mr Speaker, I'm acutely aware of the strength of feeling on this issue and the suffering of all of those impacted by this dreadful scandal. We've consistently acknowledged that justice should be delivered. I gave evidence to the public inquiry last year. The government has accepted the moral case for compensation, and which is why on Monday in the other place, we committed to bringing forward amendments at report stage of the Victim and Prisoners Bill with the intention of speeding up the implementation of our response to the infected blood inquiry. Bill Cutchins. 